looking at section 3.4 and the standard normal distribution. Now, so far this chapter, here's the story. X is distributed normally with mu and sigma squared. Mu being the mean, sigma being the standard deviation. We've been asked questions like, what is the probability that if I have this data that is distributed in this way, what's the probability that if I pick a piece of data, um, I get a value less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than or equal to a particular value, let's call it little x. And that probability is what we're going to call p. Okay. Well, I've got mu, I've got sigma, I've got little x, I've got p, one, two, three, four things involved. So I'm going to get questions where you get told three of those things and you have to work out the other one. And so far it's been straightforward. You've always been given mu and sigma. We've learned how to work out p if they tell you x. We've learned how to work out x if they tell you p. Now, this story has to stop for a little while because the question we're going to ask next is what if I give you p and x and mu, how do you work out sigma? What if I give you p and x and sigma, how do you work out mu? And the answer is we need to know about the standard normal distribution or the standardized normal distribution, which we're going to get to know and love as the letter z. Okay? So if I give you mu and sigma and x, chuck it in your calculator, your calculator will tell you p. If I give you mu and sigma and p, chuck it in your calculator, your calculator will give you x. If I give you uh, x and p and sigma and ask you to find mu, the answer is you need to use this z. If I give you x and p and mu and ask you to find sigma, the answer is you need to use this z thing from section 3.4. Okay. So if you flick forward in the chapter, you'll see that that's what's happening. Um, section 3.4 is the standard normal distribution and then section 3.5, finding mu and sigma and all the questions have z's in there, like, uh, like just here, okay? So that's what we're learning to do here. Um, it, it won't be incredibly clear as, as to how we do that. Just take my word for it for the moment that that's what we need to do. Um, before I go any further, there is something I should mention. It doesn't matter if that symbol is a less than or a less than or equal to, it won't change our method at all because this is continuous distribution. Um, it's not a discrete distribution. So if that's a less than or a less than or equal to, we treat the question exactly the same. Um, obviously, if it's a greater than, then we're looking at a different area. Uh, so we deal with it slightly differently. But just realise it's something I've not mentioned so far. Okay, so what is Z? Well, Z is the normal distribution. It's a normal distribution like any other, well, like any other, except it's a special one. It's the one with mu is zero and sigma is one. Okay, so in fact, I, I when I was in section 3.2, I think, when I was trying to get you used to the idea of um, if, if you know the mu and the sigma and the x, how do you find the p? Uh, there used to be tables, and in fact there still are tables, that used to, there are tables that look like this, very similar to the cumulative binomial tables, where if you can look up the little z value or the little x value, then that will tell you the, uh, the probability. Okay, and it's true that, that is the, until 2017, that's exactly how we did it, except that, of course, you can't have a table in the back of the textbook for every possible mu and every possible sigma. You'd end up with pages and pages of, of tables. So what we do instead is we just have one table in the back of the textbook. We have one normal distribution that we deal with, and it's the one with mu is zero and sigma is one. Okay, so zero and the normal distribution is one. So the probability of taking a value between minus one and one, that's two thirds of the data is between minus one and one on, on this Z distribution. The probability of being between minus two and two is 95% of the data. And the probability of being bigger than three and less than minus three is, well, the, the probability of being in, in this area or this area combined you should know is is uh, one minus ninety nine point seven. So you know these two areas add up to add up to zero point three percent. So basically, we can ignore that. You know, we could, being outside of three. So all the data is more or less within minus three and three within that interval. Okay. So that's our normal distribution. Now, if I take any distribution, any any normal distribution. So Z is our standardized normal distribution. If I take any other normal distribution with mu and sigma as its parameters, well, what happens if I take X and I take away mu? Okay, so whatever your outcome, take away mu. So imagine all your data, take away mu from it. Well, what happens is your 
uh, data slides down and, and now has uh, that this random variable here would have uh, a, an average of zero, wouldn't it? Okay. If you take all, if you take all your data and you add something to all the data, the average increases. If you take away something, the average decreases by the same amount. That was something that we covered in the first year statistics textbook. Okay. So if I take away mu, it's very like coding data, isn't it? Right. So x take away mu. This instead of this x as a random variable, this random variable x take away mu now has a, a, a is now centered on zero. Okay, so if the average was 50, if I take away, if I run the experiment, I, I measure whatever I'm measuring, if I take away 50, then for all the times that I run the experiment, the average is now going to be zero. If the average used to be 50 and I take away 50 from all results, then the average is now going to be on zero. So what I've done there is I've taken my normal distribution with its uh, mu here at 50, and I've slid the whole thing down so instead of being centered on 50, it's now centered on zero. So what I need to do now is instead of it having um, a spread like this, it has to have a spread like this. So it, I don't want a big skinny tall one. I don't want a long sort of sloping one like that. I want one that is sort of squashed into this shape. And the way that I do that is to divide by sigma. Okay. Now the way to think of it here is, is graph transformations. So uh, if takeaway mu is a slide, uh, divide by something is a stretch. And you're just going to have to take my word for it that the right stretch is the divide by sigma stretch. Okay, so if I take x values, I take away mu and divide by sigma, what I get is the z distribution. Okay, so the z distribution, the, the normalized normal distribution, is any normal distribution. Doesn't matter what mu and sigma are, take the mu and sigma that you've got, take away mu, divide by sigma, and you've now got a z value. Okay. Um, if you take all the all the possible x values, you take away mu and divide by sigma, you've got all the possible z values. So maybe this is sounding a little bit confusing at the moment, so let's have a look at how it works. If we have, and I'm looking at example six here in the textbook if you want to follow it through. Let's have another piece of paper. If we've got x is distributed normally with 50 for squared, and I'm interested in the probability that z uh, sorry, I'm interested in the probability for x is less than 53, okay? Well, here's my x distribution, 50 and 4 squared. So it goes, it's quite spread out and it's leveled on 50 compared to my z distribution, which starts off at 0 and has a standard deviation of 1. So it's relatively sort of more bunched up, okay? So this is my x distribution, this is my z distribution. The probability that x is less than 53, so there's 53, and there's the area, okay? That there is my little x value of 53. Now, if I think about it, whatever that probability there is, I don't know what it is, let's call it p, there has to be a point on the z distribution where the area to the left is also p, right? Where that p and that p are the same, and what's that number there, okay? Um, now, you might be thinking, well, why, why am I interested in this number here? I can find the, the, the value of p from sticking this in your calculator, and of course you can, but remember, what we're aiming at is being able to find mu and sigma if they give us um, p or x, right? So, so this, is, this is not the way that we're gonna have to do it, but this is, uh, this is a, a useful technique that we're gonna use in a different context later on. So, what is that number? Well, I've got x's here, I've got z's here. How do I turn x's into z's? And this really is the big point here. If you've got x's, you want to turn them into z's. Take your x value, take away mu, divide by sigma. And that z value is the z value that corresponds to 53. That z value is the z value there on your z distribution, okay? So the probability that capital Z is less than 53 minus 50 over four, which if I was less uh, lazy, I would work out is three quarters. The probability that Z is less than that is gonna be um, 0.75. Okay. Um, sorry, the, pro <laughs> the probability that Z is less than that is gonna be the same as the probability that X is less than 53. Okay, so uh, 
that number there is 0 0.75 and a notation for it, one notation for it is 0.75, this uh, Greek letter here, which I think is a phi. Um, now, what you would then have done traditionally is you'd take that number, you'd look at 0.75 in the table, and that would tell you the probability, and that probability would be the probability for your x distribution and the probability for your z distribution, and that one was the one that we were trying to find. Okay. Now, these days, we, we don't need to bother with the tables, so some of the questions are phrased so that you, you don't use the table. Some of the questions are phrased sort of in the old-fashioned way as though your calculator doesn't work at all. But think about this section as getting used to, if you didn't have a calculator, how would you do it? If you needed to know that P, well, you would work out the Z value that relates to 53, and that area there is the same as this area here, okay? Uh, and it turns out that, uh, that that Z value there is 0.75, and the P value that goes with Z equals 0.75 is the same as the P value that goes with X equals 53. Um, Now, that's the main idea. If you want to go from x's to z's, take away mu divided by sigma. There is also this funny little uh, table here that tells you the little z's for a given p, but it sort of <laughs> decides to work the wrong way around. So this table works with the probability that the z distribution takes a value bigger than a certain z is p. So if we're interested in the question, what's the probability um, that z takes a value bigger than um, sorry, no, we tend to ask this the other way around. If we're interested in what's this little value of z here, so the probability above it is uh, 0.2. So the question we're asking is this, here is our z distribution there is mu or there's zero. I want the area, whatever, what is the z value? So the area above it is 0 0.2, okay? And if I'm asking that question with a sort of limited numbers of, of p's, so if p is 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, any of these things here, then the z value sort of comes for free, okay? It's, it's in the table. You don't need to go to the trouble of looking it up in your calculator. It's there in your table. Now, again, you might be thinking, well, fine, but I can type that in the calculator. It's less trouble to flick back and find that table than it is to use the calculator. Well, actually, you find that a lot of the time we, we do need these things. It, it might seem perverse that suddenly we want the Z, uh, capital Z to be bigger than this value here, and all the other tables are cumulative values, so up to little z. But we're often asking this sort of question, so that's why the p-tables are, are rigged up that way around. So, um, again, it seems a bit odd. It seems as though you're, you're not bothering to use a calculator when a calculator would be easier. But get used to doing it this way. Um, personally, I mean, this this is perhaps a little bit um, old-fashioned again, but, but personally, I'd say see if you can track down, you know, they'll be easy to print out, find a normal distribution uh, z you know, Z values table, a cumulative normal distribution table, and do try and do these questions without using a calculator at all, but looking it up in the table, um, because that will give you a good sort of feel for what your calculator is doing. It's taking the Z value that you give it. The Z value to give it is the one that is related to your X value. How do you get a Z value related to an X value? Well, you take your X, take your MU, divide by sigma, okay? Um, the P's, if you know the probability and you're trying to find the little z, well, the probability that z is bigger than little z is the p in the table. Watch out for the bigger than, but that's what's happening in that table as well. Okay, good luck with exercise 3D.